All characters and events in this series, even those based on real people, are entirely fictional, and all voices are impersonated. The series contains strong language and adult content, so listener discretion is advised. Even years later, I can mark that moment as when it all changed. When everything got a little darker. Made me feel different about everyone. And it all came down to one little girl. One goddamn name. Lindsay D. Lohan. I was only 22 and it was the summer after I graduated college. Did my best Dustin Hoffman impression and sat in a pool for 23 hours out of the day. My dad finally decided I was eating too many of his veggie sausage links and got me a job. Some rich guy he knew needed some security at his production company. I was an English major, so I was a perfect fit. But all I knew about the movie was that it was starring a couple of kids. Off I went to Lake Arrowhead in San Bernardino, wondering how hard it would be to protect a couple of kids. A large man with a green polo tucked exclusively into his ass met me as I pulled up to set. He had a little badge on his breast pocket that looked homemade. You're the new one then? What gave me away? You're too eager. Is that discouraged? It's 5 a.m. It's not encouraged. Well, put it there. I'm marzipan. I'll try to be less eager. His hand enveloped mine. The hair across his wrist made it look like a raccoon had eaten my right hand. I pulled it free, proving to myself that it was still attached. Well, what kind of name is Marzipan? You always as polite. You got a mouth on you, huh? I got a whole bunch of body parts, thank you very much. But the mouth is the only one I'm using against you. All right, Jesus, settle down. I'm not trying to fight you. My name's fucking Dave. Pleased to meet you. (sighs) You're making fun of my name, fucking Dave? Hey, you don't call me fucking Dave. I'm just Dave to you. Only my friends call me fucking Dave. You're gonna have a hard time stopping me from calling you fucking Dave after you introduced yourself as... Fucking Dave. What is your problem? I'm just here to work. (laughs) Fucking Dave took me on a golf cart around the set. He didn't seem to have a real job other than waving to people. I fought my disinterest and asked the question. So why do you need more security? Oh, just a safety precaution. That's not really an answer. It wasn't supposed to be an answer. Look, I don't know what I'm here for. What am I supposed to do? Today's the big fencing scene. Just stay out of everyone's way and don't bother anyone on set, especially Lindsay and Sydney. Just let me know if you see anything suspicious. Got it? Got it. Where are you going? Away from you. Let you know if I see anything ambitious. I said... Or anything delicious. Or repetitious. Or repetitious. Or repetitious. College fucks these kids up, I swear to God. Fucking Dave told me the movie was starring these two young twin girls, Lindsay and Sydney. The studio was being hush-hush about the whole thing. They were going to unleash them on the world with the release of the movie. I felt bad for the girls. I don't know any kids whose lives were improved by fame. As I came out of this inner monologue, I found myself behind some trailer parks. I took out my one-hitter and started smoking before I heard some voices inside one of the trailers. The curtains on the window gave me a small line of sight. I saw a young girl. She sat straight up on the corner of her bed. She wanted attention and wasn't getting enough. An adult woman with expensive-looking, cheap lipstick stood looking at her phone. When's Dad coming back? I miss him. I don't know. Soon. I don't understand what he did wrong. He wasn't supposed to come see you in Napa. He was supposed to stay in New York. But why was he supposed to... Really, Sydney, can we talk about something else? This is the biggest role of your life, and you're not in the least bit focused. Do you want to be stuck doing old Navy commercials for the rest of your life? I am focused. You're the one on her phone. Sending out emails for you. Calling people for you. Making life easier for you so you can focus on nailing this role. I don't ask you to do those things. Who would do them? If not me. I could just not act. You're talking stupid now. Why don't you give Lindsay a hard time like this? I treat both of you equally. Now stop all this nonsense and take a seat and concentrate on what we're shooting today. You need to bring your game today, Sydney. It's a big day. I'll leave you now. Makeup's gonna be here in 20. I'm worried, Mommy. What are you worried about? 
about everything. About Daddy and me and Lindsay. Don't worry about your sister. Just worry about yourself and this movie. And once this movie comes out, you'll have absolutely nothing at all to worry about. Now get dressed. I gotta make some calls. Okay. Thanks, Mommy. The girl started coming towards the window. I tried to duck out of sight, but she saw me. Is that pot? Um, no. Do you want to come inside? With the pot? Either way. She was sitting on the table when I walked in the trailer. She was young, not yet a teenager. She was beautiful. You could tell she was about to be famous. Still, she had warmth. I approached her. I'm not supposed to talk to you. Why not? You're too famous for me. I'm not famous yet. Who are you? Marzipan. I'm the new security guard. You're the new security guard? Why did you italicize the you? You don't look very strong. I'm nifty. What can you do? I can quip. Were you eavesdropping on me out there? No, I was smoking. And snooping. (laughs) It's okay. I don't mind. Sometimes I like to imagine there's someone watching me. That's my worst fear. Not in a creepy way, just like keeping an eye out for me. Makes me feel like I matter. Someone really cares. People are going to care a whole lot about you after this movie. Hmm. I hope so. Can I smoke some pot? You seem too young for that. (laughs) Some guy offered me ecstasy last night. You seem too young for that, too. Come on. Pot never killed anyone. She took the one hitter from my hands and I let her. She had such confidence it was impossible to say no. I didn't want to say no. I wanted her to think I was cool. I wanted to smoke pot with her. Whoa, hey, 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 are, are you okay? Here, take, take some water. I'm sorry, just a little cough I have. Sydney took an inhaler out of her back pocket, shook it, and breathed in. I wouldn't have let you smoke if I knew you had asthma. It's not that big of a deal. My dad worries, too. He drove across the country to see me when I had an asthma attack in Napa. Where's he now? I don't know. My mom says he's home now, but I don't think that's true. He would have called by now. He always calls. I felt more in these last two minutes with Sydney than I had in the last two months combined. I felt like I had woken from a long, boring dream. The question nagged at me again. Can I ask you something? Okay. Why did they hire me? Why do they need more security here? Oh, well, they didn't tell you? I was only told to leave you and your sister alone. We've been getting some letters. You and my sister? Creepy kind of stuff. It's weird. Every word is a different color. Can you read me a letter? (laughs) They're not very imaginative. I'm going to fucking kill your heart with my bare hands and then eat your heart with my mouth. Oh, how else would he eat it? My mom says it's no big deal. She says it'll happen a lot more once the movie comes out. I can't imagine getting used to a letter like that. I'm sure he's just sick and lonely. I wish I could give him a hug. I bet he'd like me if he met me. Yeah, or he'd just eat your heart. Why'd they even let you see those letters? You're too young to read that stuff. We wanted to see the letters for ourselves. Lindsay and I are pretty convincing. Have you ever tried to say no to twins? Um, I'm not sure it's ever come up. Makeup. One second. Who was the mail delivered to on set? Lenny, oldest guy with a windbreaker. Farts a lot too. Where's a windbreaker and breaks wind, you know? Oh, I know. (laughs) Are you a detective? No, but I am security. Will you take on my case? Marzipan, I really need your help. I'm scared of this guy. Sydney, can I please come in? How much of a commitment are we talking here? Marzipan, please. I looked at Sydney's clenched fists and her pleading eyes. Her bottom lip vibrated. I didn't want her to cry. Either she was truly scared or the greatest actor of all time. Maybe this is what people did after graduation. They solved cases. I'll do it, Sydney. Thank you, Marzipan. I'm coming in. Who are you? I'm the new security. Smells like pot in here. That's why I'm here. I'm investigating. Do you have an alibi for 20 minutes ago? I was in her sister Lindsay's trailer doing her makeup. Yeah, I'll have to see if your story checks out. Nice meeting you, Sydney. Bye, Marzipan. Oh, by the way, what's the movie called? The Parent Trap. It's a remake. A 
I walked out of the trailer and looked for shade. I tried to understand what I had just agreed to. The sun was starting to rise and the weed was making me feel anxious. The next trailer over opened suddenly. I tried to turn away, but spinning always makes me sneeze. Uh, excuse me, do you work here? It was the same person, but somehow completely different. Everything I liked about Sydney looked ugly on Lindsay. There was no grace about her, nothing natural. You didn't want to look at her so much as she was forcing you to. I backed up a step. Do you work here or not? I do. I'm the new security. <laughs> you smell like weed. Yeah, I'm investigating about that. I think the makeup lady might be a pothead. Yeah, I don't think well, so. Well, I'm still gathering evidence. Okay, well, I need you to do something for me. I'm not actually supposed to talk to you. I need you to tell Nancy. You know Nancy, the director? I do not know her. I need you to tell Nancy that the next time she mixes me and Sydney up, I will walk off this set. And she can figure out a way to get Sydney to play both of our parts. That happened a lot? People mixing you up? All the time. See, I feel like I could very easily tell you guys apart. Actually, just I met your sister a second ago, actually. Right, She's... so I've told you what I needed to say, so I don't need to be here anymore. So I'm going to walk away. I'm actually already working for your sister. I'm investigating those threatening letters. Those letters are addressed to me, too. Well, then I guess I'm working for you, too. I don't need you. Thanks. Just pass my message along to Nancy. It's been a pleasure. You reek of weed and sarcasm. Just then, a producer whisked Lindsay away. I followed her onto set where a group of girls dressed for camp waited. This was the big fencing scene. The director looked stressed, so I figured Lindsay's message could wait. Lindsay glared at me anyway, egging me on. I walked toward Miss Myers and then veered right as she unhinged her jaw. All right, people. This is what we've been working for. Let's make sure everything is where it needs to be and let's nail this on the first try. What do you say? Lindsay, Sydney, are we ready? Yep. Ready whenever you are. All right, places, everyone. Lindsay and Sydney stood across from each other in their fencing outfits totally locked in. They both looked like stars. The other one, each other's only equal. Roll sound, please. Sound. We're rolling. And action. <laughs> Sydney was writhing on the ground. She was supposed to fall into a bucket of water, but the bucket was empty. The crowd was around her in a second, and paramedics were called. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone run off. No one else seemed to notice. Everyone was focused on Sydney. I took off after him. Fucking Dave had left his golf cart sitting around because I assume he wanted me to steal it. I quickly caught up with the man and nipped at his heel with my front wheels, causing him to fall. He was an old man, and I felt bad as soon as he collapsed to the ground. He stayed lying on his stomach, looking straight up at me. Why were you running from the scene of the crime? Because I'm scared. Scared of what? The witch. What are you talking about? Uh, there was water in that bucket a second ago. Someone witched it out right before Sydney fell, I'm telling You're you. You're saying someone made the water disappear? Just like that. It was there, then it wasn't. One second, splash, the next, go bluey. Do you know who it is? I have no idea. It could be anyone. It could be you. It's probably not you because you just got here, but it could be anyone. Are you... Lenny, by any chance? What, because I wear a windbreaker and I break wind? Uh, yes. You know, I fed them that line. I wear the windbreaker to encourage that joke, and they act like they're making fun of me. So, when did you start receiving the hate mail? Just last week. I got a note on Monday, and then another on Tuesday, and then three on Wednesday, and then... Well, wait, no, only two on Wednesday, but two also okay, on... Okay, great. Wait, you didn't let me finish. And three on Friday, and then... Uh, none so far today. Okay, are, are they delivered with the rest of the mail? Oh, no. They're delivered right to my desk while I'm away. You know, when I go to the bathroom or something. I'll come back and there will be this little note. Did you read them? Feh, such filth. Why didn't you get someone to watch your desk while you were gone? Well, do I come to your job and tell you how to do it? What is your job, anyway? I'm the new security. You? I can provide better security than you. I've got wit. <laughs> Whoa, Lenny! Hey, the joke doesn't work unless I fart, too. The joke already worked. You're an old guy in a windbreaker. I can assume you fart constantly. I fart when I need to. I'm not going to hold it in for anyone. 
They can pull the plug on me if they want me to hold it in. Is there anything else you can tell me about the letters, Lenny? You, uh, doing some detective work? I dabble. I already solved the case of who was smoking the pot. Was it you? It was. You know, there was something kind of weird. I love weird things. I ran back to the set, high on the information that I had just learned. No one greeted me when I got back. No one was in sight. Fucking Dave was the only thing proving to me that humanity still existed. Where's my golf cart? Oh, I knew there was something I forgot. It's about 400 feet that away. There may be an old man lying underneath it. You should be fired. The operative word being should. Listen, Lenny told me something about the hate mail. The hate mail you never even mentioned to me? You didn't ask about it. I didn't know to. So what'd you learn? Why should I tell you anything? Do whatever you want. But maybe I got information that could help you with this little case you're investigating. I know you've been playing like you're a detective around here. Hey, if you're unhappy with my interpretation of the job, you could explain to me what security entails, other than fucking waving. It entails staying out of everyone's way, which is just about the only thing you haven't done around here. You want to know what Lenny told me? He told me that the hate notes were addressed to Sydney. Only Sydney. But by the time Lenny gets the letters to the Lohans, someone else has written Lindsay. I think maybe it's just Sydney who's being targeted for some reason. But someone else is trying to make it seem like they're both being targeted. Well, shit. I know! Hey, where is everybody? I want to tell them. Well, Sydney's in the hospital being looked at. And then, well, everyone else is out searching. Searching for what? Lindsay. She's gone. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Sound design and editing by Hannah Worker. Music by Tree Palmado. With performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Gideon Saltzman Gubbe as Fucking Dave. Eileen Vecti as Lindsay and Sydney Lohan. Olivia Jampole as Mommy Dearest slash Makeup Lady. Nicole Klein as Nancy Myers. Nate Ratner as Lenny. And Robert Bowles as The Voice. In the 90s, the twin obsession was hitting its peak. They were the perfect specimens for Hollywood. Double the cuteness, double the youth, and they provided the perfect loophole for child labor laws. When one was taking mandatory classes, the other was on set, shooting. Never a wasted moment. The only problem was, what do you do with twins when they grow up? If only they could stay young forever. We present, for your listening pleasure, a six-part series entitled, Lindsay. Sit back, relax, and keep your eye on the twins. Fucking Dave had just told me that Lindsay was gone. I whipped my head around like maybe I could find her, but my eyes only landed on the empty bucket. I couldn't stop staring at the blood stains smeared across the bottom of the bucket. In the commotion, no one had bothered to clean up the mess. Maybe it was no one's job. Maybe it was my job. I wondered what part of Sydney's body the blood was from. Is she okay? She's in the hospital. You have a real ear for missing questions. You got a real mouth for asking the wrong ones. So the water disappearing and Lindsay being kidnapped. It's all related to the hate mail, right? No one said kidnapping. Right now, our job is just to find Lindsay and we'll take it from there. It's not that big a set. I'll go this way. Bye. Wait, Dave! Got fucking Dave! I need to ask you... Hey, Jojo, I can't really talk right now. Oh, hello to you too. Sorry, things are just kind of crazy here. Good crazy? Um, what would be good crazy? So, bad crazy. 
One serious injury and one disappearance, crazy. Good thing they got more security today. Um, you call just to say hey? Am I seeing you tonight? Yeah, I think so. I can text you when I get off work and we'll see. All right, so I should just wait around for your text then? Hey, don't let me stop you from going out on an adventure. You're in fine form. Sorry, this this all just happened, so I'm kind of just dealing right now. Like, I, I don't really know how long I'll have to be here. I'll let you go. I just wanted to hear your voice. I'll make sure to get off early, okay? I love you. Yeah, you too. Sorry for the bother. It wasn't a bother, I just... Hello. Fucking Dave was long gone. Jojo and I had started dating four years ago, during the first week of college. Couldn't find anyone better, so we lasted. But things had gotten tough lately. We were getting antsy and the sex couldn't get any rougher without being straight assault. We were either going to break up or get miserably married in the next year. The wind kicked up and the door of a cabin slammed shut. I walked up the stairs and approached the cabin. My head was killing me, either from the stress or the weed withdrawal. I decided to play it safe and smoke a spliff. I lit up and walked into the cabin and I immediately felt company. There was nothing behind the door, and the bunk beds held no lumps. A shiver ran down my spine. I could feel a presence, but I couldn't see one. I started to slowly back out of the cabin. I knew you were the pothead. A small girl materialized in front of me. I couldn't believe my eyes. The room had been empty a second ago. Now, Lindsay stood in front of me, as though she'd always stood in front of me. As though I'd looked right through her. You're supposed to be missing. I still am missing. To everyone but you. Why didn't I see you? Oh. It's just this thing. This thing? Ever since I was little, I've been able to just kind of turn myself off. Lower the color contrast or something so that no one can see me. Everyone just kind of looks right past me. You can be invisible? More like I can camouflage myself. Like a chameleon. She had this smug look on her face, and all I wanted to do was tell her how ridiculous she sounded. But she had popped up out of nowhere, and I was starting to think that Lindsay might be Lenny's witch. Do you do that a lot? Disappear? Every once in a while, when I'm feeling down. Nothing cheers you up more than watching people miss you. When people think you're gone, they do and say all sorts of nice things. Stuff they never say in front of your face. Have you ever gone away for a long time? Not yet. I'm saving my fake death. I want to be famous when I do that. Once I get famous, millions of people will be sad about my death. Random people I've never met will just think about me instead of their kids or their mortgage or their job. They'll think about me and my death and what the world lost when it lost me. I stood gaping at this little girl who was obsessed with death. I didn't know what to say and my headache had only gotten worse. I needed fresh air. I need to go outside and smoke. <laughs> I thought that's what you came in here for. Okay, I need to go outside and smoke and get away from you. Look, you can't tell anyone you saw me. I'm pretty sure that's my only job. And why did you reveal yourself to me if you wanted to stay missing? Because I need your help. You're like the detective, right? Yes, I... I am like the detective. Well, somebody out there really wants to hurt me. I was supposed to fall in that bucket. It's better if I stay missing. Whoever is trying to get at me, they'll freak out if I'm gone. Look for that person. Talk to the butler. He's the one I trust. I know you don't like me, but find out what's going on. I I'm just a kid. I rolled my eyes, and when they came back around, she was gone. I tried to laugh it off like she was about to pop out of somewhere and I was in on the joke. But the cabin was empty. I'm just a kid. As far as I could see, I was alone. I felt alone. I walked out of the cabin and found an intern at the bottom of the steps, looking up. Are you... Marsha? No. Does your name kind of sound like that, though? Marzipan. Yeah, Marzipan. I'm supposed to bring you to the hospital. Sydney wants to see you. How is she? I'm not sure. Sydney told someone who told someone else who told someone else who told me to come and get you. Yeah, let's go. Were you talking to someone in there? What? No, why? Did you see someone walk out? I thought I heard two voices. You did? I'm practicing puppetry. Oh. Where's your puppet? I 
just use my hand. Can I see? So the thing with Sydney wasn't urgent? Come on, show me something. All right, calm your intern pants. I'd like to introduce you to the amazing David Copper Puppet. The greatest magician this side of my body. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Well, hello there, little girl. I'm 25. Do you believe in magic? Some. Well, if you believe in some, you believe in all. Magic is a binary. Now please show me your hand. Aha! Very good. Very interesting hand. You eat carrots, I presume? What? No. You've never eaten a carrot? No, I have. Okay, then, just as I thought. Isn't your mouth not supposed Please! to- Please! No questions! I spotted a pen sticking out of the intern's back pocket. It was one of those pens that had five different colors on it. All right. Now I would like you to take your hand and turn away from me and whisper a secret into your hand. What kind of I said no questions! Now please, hurry! There are other children that want their own magic shows. The intern turned her back. I plucked the multicolored pen from her pocket and inspected it. Oh. My God. Well, what's going on? You wrote that hate mail. With this pen! J'accuse! Me? Are, are you kidding me? I, I mean... That's a hell of a magic trick. I brought the small, unpaid worker to Sydney to tell her the story. So someone has been sending me these letters for a week, telling me exactly what to write, and then I would drop them in Lenny's office. Who are the letters from? They're typed, and there's no address. Why did you agree to write the letters? I, I don't know. She's I just... the intern. She takes orders. But the point is, the intern was only supposed to address them to you. Someone else has been writing Lindsay's name on the letters once the intern drops them off with Lenny. So we're looking for a person who wants to get me, and a person who wants people to think someone also wants to get my sister? Ugh. How are you feeling? Like I fell from a high place? Why do you ask? We should rest. Do we have a lead? I don't think your sister was kidnapped or murdered. Did you see her? Kind of. She just... appeared. And then disappeared. She went invisible? You know about that? Yeah. I know about that. I'm her twin. I can always see her. She always begs me to keep quiet when she does that disappearing act. I don't understand the point. It just stresses everyone out for no reason. Yeah, well, it is pretty immature. But if Lindsay stays gone, the person who is trying to get you might use her disappearance to his advantage and ramp up the hate mail, claiming to have kidnapped Lindsay a la the Big Lebowski. I don't know what that is. Big Lebowski? Oh my god, you, you need to see it. It's if, if only to, like, understand the situation. <laughs> The intern, have you seen The Big Lebowski? Nope. Oh my god, you are a constant disappointment. Okay, so what's the plan? Well, assuming the person will leave a letter tomorrow, I'm gonna watch the intern all day and try to find the person who leaves the letters. The intern says it's always stuck in her brown paper bag lunch, so... I was gonna stake out the fridge from when the intern puts her bag in the morning all the way to lunchtime. But the intern isn't gonna have any reason to make lunch if Lindsay and I aren't on set. And the whole point is for Lindsay to be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have an idea about that, too. I was thinking, you could make a speedy recovery and come back to set tomorrow. And... And, and you tell them that you can play both roles. It'll get us back on set, and it'll only have to be for the day, and then Lindsay could come back. So... I would play both roles? Sydney already looked better. She started dressing immediately. Color came back to her skin and she was yelling for her mom. Mom, come in here! What is it? Who are these people? I'm the intern. I'm security. You smell like marijuana. I think that's the intern. She has a problem. Mom, we're leaving the hospital. I feel better. We're going back to set. Tell Nancy we're ready to shoot. But what about Lindsay? What about her? I can play both roles. We don't need Lindsay. I felt a chill on me again. I looked around for Lindsay, but she didn't appear. I looked over at Sydney, who was staring hard at the wall. What are you looking at, Sydney? Nothing. 
Let's go. We met up the next morning before the shoot. It was me, Sydney, the intern, and the butler. Why am I here? Lindsay trusts you. You saw her? Uh, she told me that before she went missing. And who are you? I'm the detective. Or security or whatever. Just shut up and listen. The intern is going to put his lunch in the fridge here. Sydney will go out to the set to shoot. Me and the butler hide behind the fridge and wait for someone to come in and reach for the intern's lunch. Then we'll have our guy. Yes, you know I play a butler in the movie, right? And even my character in the movie has a name. They don't just call him the butler. Right, so everybody know the plan? Ready? Break. Everyone started to walk in their given direction, but I pulled on Sydney's arm. Hey, have you seen Lindsay around at all? Nope, not at all. You sure? Yep. You ready to hear my British accent? Very nice. Sydney skipped away as I took my position behind the refrigerator. We were bordered on either side by huge stacks of water bottles. There wasn't much space, so I figured it was time to get to know the butler. I'm Marzipan. Wally. Wally doesn't sound British. Do you know British names? I know un-British names. I'm not British. I'm actually a family friend of the Lohans. They got me this job. Family friends how? I taught Lindsay the piano. Do you know where she went? Do you know what's going on here? I know that Lindsay is in danger. I could feel it as soon as she started on this movie. Who is she in danger from? I couldn't say for sure, but... The door opened. The butler and I covered each other's mouths. We heard the guy slowly creep toward the fridge. I peeked through the crack past the water and I could see a hand holding a letter. He opened the fridge. I grabbed the butler's hand and started to shift my weight, preparing to pounce. Just then, we heard Lindsay's voice outside. Hi, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> We're spared of hearing more of Sydney's terrible British accent. <laughs> Hooray. The butler and I knocked over the water and jumped out from behind the fridge, but our guy was already out the door. We ran after him. Our guy ran towards the woods and we followed. I started hacking and coughing after my first minute of sprinting. Took out a spliff and hoped the butler was in better shape than me. After a few minutes, I heard a scream and then a shot. Oh my god. What happened? Did you see who it was? Are you are you okay? The butler was lying on a tree, bleeding into its roots. No one else was in sight. He started to whisper to me slowly. Don't trust anyone except for... Except who? Except who, Wally? Oh my god, I swear to god, if you die before finishing your sentence, I am gonna pray you go to British hell. British heaven, same as... British hell, except British hell, Sonny. You can make jokes, but you can't tell me who to trust? Don't trust. Yeah, I got it. Don't trust anyone except who? Who? Except yourself. My phone rang all of a sudden. I don't know why, but I picked it up. Hey, it's me. Listen, I've been thinking and... I think we need to break up, or... I don't know, or at least spend some time apart. Okay. Okay? Yeah, um... I'll talk to you later. I held the butler's hand. He looked at me like he understood me. And then he died with the same look stuck on his face. I cried and the tree gathered up my tears and his blood and grew a little bit. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Sound design and editing by Isabel Platt. Music by Tree Palmado. 
with performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Gideon Saltzman Gubbe as Fucking Dave, Alex Genty Wexbird as Jojo, Eileen Vecti as Lindsay and Sydney Lohan, Amanda Sentineau as The Intern, Olivia Jampole as Mommy Dearest, Luke Taylor as The Butler or Wally, and Robert Bowles as The Voice. No is the word used to put boundaries on a childhood, and it's also the word least heard by child stars. At age seven, Drew Barrymore was the adorable little sister in E.T. At nine, she was partying at Studio 54, and by 12, she was in rehab. You can go down the line from Macaulay Culkin and Amanda Bynes all the way back to Tatum O'Neill and Shirley Temple. The pattern is clear. Consuming the glamour of Hollywood without limits takes its toll even on our brightest, most promising stars. When you've exhausted a full life by the age of 16, where to go from there? We present, for your listening pleasure, a six-part series entitled, Lindsay. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the Dennis Quaid impression. The next couple of days happened fast. They buried the butler and halted production for a couple of days. Suddenly, I found myself in the Lohan inner circle. I was promoted to personal bodyguard, which made fucking Dave question his career path. Jojo tried calling, but I let it go. He had no idea who I was anymore. Not after all of this. Lindsay and Sydney asked me into their trailer. We were set to start filming again the next day. I walked in and saw a ghost. The butler was sitting there next to Lindsay and Sydney like nothing had happened. Like the bullet hole in his heart was a pierced ear that had closed up. Oh my god! Hi. Oh, how are you? This isn't Wally. This is Wally's twin, Polly. His twin? Not anymore. So you're playing the butler now? If I can get the British accent right... I've never acted before, but this way the studio doesn't have to reshoot any of the scenes. Sit down, Marzipan. We've got good news. You guys are quitting the movie? (laughs) What would be good about that? No more deaths. Well, that's the good news. There won't be any more deaths because they caught the guy. Dennis and Natasha are throwing a party tonight, and you're invited, Marzipan. Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson? I don't know them. Well, I get a plus one, and I'm taking you. You're my date. (laughs) Sydney smiled at me, and I couldn't help but smile back. Sydney, Lindsay, we should go get ready for the party. You guys go. I have to talk to Marzipan for a second. Mr. Maddock over here wants to have a secret meeting with her private dick. Or I guess we should just call you a private pussy, huh? <laughs> just Marzipan's fine. <laughs> Sydney blew a kiss to me as she walked out of the trailer with Polly. I tried to laugh it off, but there was something different about her. I could tell she was starting to understand how important she was. She was starting to talk down to people. I smiled back at Sydney stupidly as she disappeared. Lindsay watched my face the entire time. It's bullshit. This guy they found? You met him? No, but I know it's bullshit. Everybody was dying for someone to confess. They didn't care who it was. Just as long as they could get the movie going again. Can I ask you something? Ask. Why'd you come back like that? We were so close to catching the guy, and then you suddenly appeared and everything went to shit. I don't know why I came back. I got tired of being invisible, I guess. Eventually, people get comfortable with you being gone. No one wanted you gone. We just needed you to stay gone for a little while longer. Can you do me a favor, Marzipan? Can you check this guy out? They're holding him at the San Bernardino County Jail. I don't know, Lindsay. So you think this whole thing is over? You solved the case then? 
Can you come with me? I've got to get ready for the party. Can't have Sydney looking better than me. Thanks, Marzipan. And just like that, she was gone. I had no one to say no to. Even if I did, I would have just said yes. I was being manipulated by 12-year-old girls, and they weren't even trying that hard. What the fuck was the point of a college education if I could still get played like this? I had no idea what to expect when I got there. Apparently his name was Jake Treefire. I wonder if he was some kind of cold hippie killer or something. I sat down and a nauseatingly handsome man sat down across the glass from me. What magazine are you from again? I'm not from a magazine. I'm Marzipan. Oh, your name sounds like magazine. How'd you get the name Treefire? It's my stage name. My real name is Anthony Lombardo. You're an actor. Actor, musician, writer, I do a lot. You murder too, I guess. Well, yeah, I guess that too. Why? I just hated them so much. You know, Lauren and Sarah. They were gonna get famous before I was. It's Lindsay and Sydney. Right. I have a problem with names. I thought this was gonna be a magazine interview. I'm Lindsay and Sydney's friend. They think they're safe now because the killer is caught. Is that true? Yep, that's, uh, that's me. These girls are 12, Jake. They want to relax and enjoy themselves like little girls should. Well, I'm in fucking jail, aren't I? You seem like a good person. Why are you lying? (sighs) Come on, can you just leave me alone and let me do this thing? I'm not recording this, Jake. I just want the truth. You a cop? I'm a private pussy. Alright, you can't tell anyone. Everyone thinks you're a murderer. What can you tell me that's worse? I'm a bad actor. (laughs) What? I've been out here for three years, and the best I've got to show for it is this part in this kid's college thesis. Every day I would drop off my headshots with Lenny, and he would tell me about the gossip that might help me land a role, so... So? So Lenny told me about this letter business, and then the whole murder, I saw an opportunity, you know, I figured at the very least, I get a book deal out of this, and if I ever get charged, I could just say, I got framed. And how good of a story would that be? But you weren't framed. You confessed. And the real killer is still out there. Eh, it's not my problem. Besides, my girl got picked up a week ago, so I figured it'd be pretty romantic if we're locked up at the same time. And, you know, it would keep me from cheating. You know, unless I learn how to fuck dudes, right? (laughs) Good luck with your acting career, Anthony. Yeah, well, thanks. And let me know if you ever find that killer. I felt nauseous. We were farther than ever from solving this. I didn't feel like I was helping at all. I thought about just driving home and telling them I quit. I was trying to make sense of everything. Lenny, Jake Treefire, the butler, the letters, the twins, and how I fit into any of it. I looked up and realized I had driven to Dennis Quaid's house for the party. The driveway had five stop signs along the way. Fucking Dave greeted me at the door. Somehow I was relieved to see him. What the fuck are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. And I will. What the fuck are you doing here? I'm working security. They only hired one person for security. I'm someone's date. How do you think this is all gonna end? Most parties end the same way. Bad sex and Popeyes. I mean you, the movie, the girls. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Tell me what I'm getting into. You wouldn't listen anyways. You have such a way with words. Have fun with all the actors and murderers. Here's my keys. I walked into the party and felt lightheaded. Twenty chandeliers hung overhead like crystal palm trees. Everything was so bright and beautiful. It was like a glossy version of life. Half-naked women walked around, offering the fanciest-looking appetizers I've ever seen. The air felt more expensive. I breathed it in and couldn't help but smile. I felt famous. I spotted Lindsay across the room and suddenly remembered Jake. I made my way over to her as a glass clinked and everyone turned. Dennis Quaid stepped up. Hi, everyone. I know it's been a tough last couple days. We all miss Wally dearly, and we know that the best that we can do for him is to finish this movie. Wally cared deeply for Lindsay and Sydney, 
and he can rest easy, knowing now that the man who took his life and terrorized Lindsay and Sydney is now safely behind bars. I, for one, want to say that I feel so fortunate to be working with all of you wonderful people. And I would also like to say to Lindsay and Sydney, no one will ever hurt you, and everyone at this party loves you dearly. I could say confidently that the worst is behind us, so if everyone would raise a glass to the future, and to finishing this fantastic film. They set off as soon as Dennis Quaid had finished, but Lindsay had disappeared from sight. The speech made me frantic. I had to tell someone about Jake before everyone got too comfortable. I felt a tug in my back pocket and Sydney appeared behind me. She held a champagne glass in her left hand and swayed slightly. Sydney looked incredible. She had a white dress floating on top of her, making her seem older than me. Sydney wasn't even famous yet, but every single person in that room was staring at her. My date finally showed up. Are you drunk? <laughs> well, I had to do something while I waited for you. Well, I'm here. Let's go somewhere more quiet, Marcy. No, I have to find your sister. There's something I need to tell her and you. You make me jealous when you talk about my sister so much, you know? Sydney, this is serious. <laughs> okay, come on. We'll go somewhere to be serious. She grabbed my hand and led me upstairs. I felt the cloud come over me again. I was losing myself to the party, and all I could think about was how nice it was to be holding the most important person's hand in this house. We walked by rooms of people fucking and snorting, but Sydney seemed unfazed. She found us a room and shut the door. She sat on the bed and patted the space next to her. Listen, Sydney, I found something out today. Let me go first. I'm scared, Marzipan. I know we're still in danger, and I know once this movie comes out, we'll be in even more danger. I'm scared for me, but I'm even more scared for Lindsay. I love her more than anything, Marzipan, and I think she's headed for trouble. I know Who the fuck was this girl? Was she even drunk before, or was that just for appearances? We need you. I need you. You're the only person I trust. I, I don't even know whose side my mom is on. But I know you care about us, and I know when I'm with you, I'm safe. It had come out so fast, it was hard to process. I puffed out my chest a couple of inches and tried to remember what strength felt like. Sydney looked down and took me by the elbow. She looked up, and I lost myself. I forgot what I wanted to tell her. I didn't see anything past her artichoke green eyes. Kiss me, Marzipan. We heard shouting from downstairs. I came to and realized where I was and what I was doing. I started down the stairs, making sure there was a reasonable distance between Sydney and me. I got outside where everyone was staring at a man across the pool. The man looked straight at me, and I wondered if I was looking at the murderer. Honey! I realized then that he was looking at Sydney, who had placed herself right behind me. What are you doing here, Dad? I wanted to come and see you guys. It's been so long. This movie, The Death, it's just all so crazy. I want you to come home with me. I love you girls. You know that. Is Mom okay with that? No, I'm not. Your father just showed up here unannounced, and he's demanding that you and Lindsay go home with him. I mean... This is a party, for Christ's sake. Show some tact. Lindsay, what do you think? Lindsay didn't say a word. She just stared at me and shook her head. I tried to move away from Sydney. Honey, please. I miss you. Just tell them you're happy to see me. Just come for a day or two. You need to get away from this movie for a while. I looked at Sydney and tried to understand what she was thinking. She cared about her dad and missed him. That much was clear. I sensed her body longing to be held tight by her father. And she looked around and became quickly embarrassed. She straightened up and looked through her father as though he was an overzealous fan. Dad, this is weird. I'm sorry. You should go. Please escort him out of here, Dave. Fucking Dave took him by the arm and he started to scream. You can't do this to me, Dina. Everyone looked away and pretended they didn't hear anything. A restraining order won't stop me. You're destroying my girls. I won't let you endanger my girls. I won't let you, Dina. Fuck you! Oh, real nice. Swear in front of the kids, you fucking idiot. Fucking Dave carried Michael Lohan out of the property and everyone took a deep breath and continued the conversation they were having. 
Lindsay and Sydney were gone, and so was their mom. I thought about jumping in the pool to see if I could feel any more insane. The intern popped up behind me instead. How did you get invited? Dennis Quaid is my uncle. I want to be alone, intern. I know you probably don't want to hear this, If you're going to start that sentence like that, just fucking say it. The intern held up an envelope. I got another letter, Marzipan. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Music by Tree Palmado. With performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Gideon Saltzman Gubbe as Fucking Dave, Eileen Vecti as Lindsay and Sydney Lohan. Olivia Jampole as Mommy Dearest, Amanda Sentineau as The Intern, Luke Taylor as Polly, Rob Caparelli as Jake Treefire, slash Dennis Quaid, Steve Taylor as Papa Lohan, and Robert Bowles as The Voice. The transition for a female child star from cute kid to bombshell babe is treacherous and often non-existent. People can't decide whether they want to baby them or seduce them. In 1939, at the age of 16, Judy Garland's cast as the young Dorothy. Her breasts were taped flat and she had to wear a special corset to complete the prepubescent look. There's no room for a young girl's identity when they exist in everyone's imagination. We present, for your listening pleasure, a six-part series entitled, Lindsay. Sit back, relax, and keep your eyes on the road. Don't film another scene. Don't even come to set. This won't end well for any of you. I didn't want anyone dead, but if that's what it takes. Wally was an accident, the next person won't be. I'm a sick man. I can't let this movie come out. I can't let other people know about the girls. They're mine. Their hearts are mine. There will be no more letters, only death. I read the letter aloud to Lindsay for the fifth time. We sat in her trailer. I wondered where to go from here. Figured I was out of the job. Guess there were more serious things to think about, but that's what came to mind. I still couldn't look Lindsay in the eye since kissing her sister. Do you have your car? No, my my dad dropped me off. Mm, That's okay. I have mine. You don't drive. But I have a car. Can you drive stick? Um, not really. Mm, Good enough. Come on, we're taking a road trip. We're gonna go see my dad. Is that a good idea? They've shut us down again. What else can we do today? My dad wanted me to visit him, and my mom won't let me, so you'll take me. I started to object, and then I was inside Lindsay's car trying to keep it from stalling. These girls could make me do anything. I wondered if I would kill for them. Didn't seem so far-fetched anymore. What are you thinking about? Just trying to figure out what I'm doing here with you. You're helping me. But why? Because you like me? What would you rather do? I have no idea. My whole life has been doing things because I can't think of something I'd rather do. My whole life has been daydreaming of something better while I'm doing something else. You're too young to talk about your whole life. I feel old already. Why are we seeing your dad? I miss him. Sydney does too, but she won't admit it. The movie is ruining us. (laughs) I knew it would. Why are you doing it then? Lindsay shrugged. What do you think I should do? You could be a regular person. You could go to school and hold hands with a boy and get bad grades. Is that what you did? Yeah, kinda. Were you happy? I think so. It's, it's hard to remember now. But all this, it just, it just seems kind of toxic and dangerous now. Yeah, well, it's all I know. 
I don't think I'd be good at holding boys' hands or getting bad grades. I'm good at this. We sat in silence. I didn't know if it was just a pause or if the conversation was over. I wanted desperately to turn on the radio, but couldn't take my hand off the stick shift. We were quiet for two hours. I forgot about Lindsay and remembered how much I loved to drive. She brought me back. Mm, I have to pee. Let's stop for food. I saw a sign for a rest stop with a Cinnabon and didn't hesitate. We walked inside and I fast walked over to the counter while Lindsay ran to the bathroom. Welcome to Cinnabon. How can I help you? I would like the biggest Cinnabon you have with extra white stuff. Okay, a Cinnabon with extra frosting. That'll be 863. Okay, um, one second. I think I have exact change. Began to finger out pennies from my fanny pack. The large man behind me started to sigh loudly. Got louder with each coin I put down on the counter. Oh. Um, is there a problem? I don't know. Is there a problem with paying in bills? I'd like to use my change, thank you very much. Well, I'm trying to eat too. Well, you'd be ordering right now if you didn't start sighing. But then you wouldn't know how unhappy I was. Something inside me snapped. I didn't feel like taking anyone's shit, especially at a road stop Cinnabon. Why don't you fuck off? What? I said... Fuck off! Stop bothering women that are smaller than you because nothing in your own life is going right. Your Cinnabon's gonna taste like shit. It's gonna get inside your body and mix with all the rest of your bullshit makeup. You're gonna try to enjoy your food, but all you'll think about is what you should have said to me. And you know what I'll be thinking about? How fucking good this Cinnabon is. I made a beeline for the bathroom. I felt good. I felt in control. I couldn't remember the last time I felt that. I was desperate to dig into my food, but Lindsay still hadn't left the bathroom. After a few more minutes, I forgot about my food and started to worry. I entered the bathroom and found her white van sticking out from one of the stalls. You okay in there? No. You want to talk about it? It happened. My underwear is ruined. Oh, okay, okay. That... that's okay. I have a pad in my bag. It's... it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. And it happened in a road stop bathroom. And my mom's not here, and Sydney's not here, and I don't think I'd tell them if they were here anyway. I... I wanted to reach out and touch her, but the stall door stood between us. Marzipan? Yeah? Why did you kiss my sister? I don't know. Because I'm a creep? Because my head is all fucked up? But why didn't you kiss me? I care about you too much. That doesn't make any sense. I love you and I don't ever want to take advantage of you like that. I was just talking now. All I wanted in that moment was to make Lindsay feel loved by someone. Suddenly, the stall door swung open. She'd been crying. I sat on the bathroom floor next to the toilet and closed the stall behind me. I don't want to put it on yet. I'm not ready. That's okay. We took apart the Cinnabon in silence. Finally, she slipped on a maxi pad lined with frosting and cinnamon specks. And we walked out to the car, hand in hand. A couple hours later, we got to Lindsay's dad's house. He was sitting outside when we pulled up. He had grayish hair that had looked that way for the last 30 years. He wore Bill Gates jeans and a sunflower polo to boot. He looked completely harmless. Honey! Hi, Daddy. This is Marzipan. She's my friend. Well, I've heard so much about you, Marzipan. Really? What, uh, what kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, this and that. I didn't know people talked about me. That's exciting. (laughs) She's a hoot, Linz. (laughs) Isn't she? I followed Lindsay's father into the house. It was a completely sane-looking space. There was nothing of the screaming man from the other night. I tried to recalibrate as he rhythmically sliced cheese next to me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about last night. I, I didn't mean to embarrass you and your sister. You didn't embarrass me. Well, okay. Good. Your mom just... I know, Dad. Well, so, uh, what's going on, sweetie? What what brings you here? Did you see the latest letter? Letter? What? What? What letter? They're still still threatening you? I told you, it's not safe on... Can you read it, Marzipan? 
Don't film another scene. Don't even come to set. This won't end well for I could for tell I was part of Lindsay's scripted scene dead. now, but I didn't understand what character I was playing. She well, seemed serious, like she had aged ten years since we were in the bathroom together. I can't let this movie come out. I can't let other people know about the girls. They're mine. Their hearts are mine. There will be no more letters, only death. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is absolutely disgusting. It, is the studio trying to make you go ahead and still film? The letters before this one, they were only addressed to Sydney. They never referred to multiple girls. I would see the letter in Lenny's office and write my name on it. I didn't want Sydney to be singled out. I didn't want her to feel like she was on her own with this. But this last letter was addressed to both of us. The person said the girls were his. It's a totally different kind of letter. I know it was you, Daddy. I tried to process all this at once. How did I not notice the new letter and the old letters were completely different? Should I have figured out that Lindsay was writing her own name on the other letters? How good a detective was I, really? Maybe my only purpose was to read out letters as Lindsay dramatically accused people. Well, why would I do that, Linz? Why would I want to scare you guys like that? Because you want us to quit the movie. Well, have you given it any thought? Daddy. Lindsay's dad got up at this point and started to make himself a drink. I tried to raise my hand and wave it a bit so he'd make me one, but he didn't seem to notice. You know what I did growing up, Marzipan? Um, I do not, but I bet it'll relate to you writing the letter, though. I acted. Hmm, just like them. <laughs> I started when I was seven, and I was good. I mean, I was good, and I liked being so good at something. People say you get taken advantage of, you get into drugs and sex too early, but but I had good parents. Uh, you know, I didn't get all fucked up like most kids. Still, I, I never wanted this for Lindsay and Sydney. You can't win. People hate you for growing up. They love you as a cute little kid, and then uh, they say that you betrayed them when you grow boobs or your balls drop and you start acting like an adult. Everybody's angry with themselves for the way they grew up, and they take it out on you. Uh, yeah, it makes it hard to like yourself. But their mom said that they were too cute not to let them do it. I was always against it. And I will do everything in my power to keep you two from the public eye. You shouldn't have done that, Daddy. You had no right you are my daughter, and you're going to tell me about my rights? The screaming man was back. The transition was seamless. Everyone here knew how to present themselves as sane until the time came to rip off their skin and reveal their crazy. I'm going to tell everyone at the studio about this letter, and we'll start filming again. But there is someone who wants to kill you out there. That guy they locked up, he doesn't know anything. Someone killed Wally, and they're going to kill you next. I guess that's a risk we'll have to take. Bye, Daddy. We need to spend some time apart from each other. No, no, Lindsay, please! Come on, Marzipan. She closed the door behind her. I started to follow. Lindsay's dad took me by the hand as I left. What are you doing? Look, they're... they're in danger. Y you see that. You have to help. You have to figure out what's going on. Talk to Dennis Quaid. I found this in his house. A gun emerged from his pocket. <gasps> gasped like there were cameras around. Same make as Wally's murder weapon. They never found the gun. Why haven't you reported this? Well, I stole this from a celebrity's house. My wife is this close to a restraining order. Look, I need your help. The girls, they need your help. Marzipan! I backed away from the gun and out the door. I kept my head down as I walked to the driver's side of the car. What'd he say? Um, nothing. Let's get out of here. We were quiet on the way back. We had too many things to say to each other. I noticed a white car behind us. I didn't know anything about cars, but it looked like a sneaky make to me. Has that car been behind us long? <laughs> You're so paranoid. You are not nearly paranoid enough. There are people out there who want to hurt you. People are out there who want to hurt you too? Not in the same way. So I should listen to Papa Lohan? Do whatever you want. 
Now you're gonna act like you don't care what I do. I can't care what you do because I know you won't listen either way. You wanna know why I won't leave the movie? Hit me. It's not the fame or the money or the notoriety or anything like that. It's Sydney. What do you mean? She's gonna be famous with or without me. And I can't be the irrelevant twin. It's not gonna be my life. If she wins, then I win too. And Hollywood loves twins, like Mary Kane. The white car slammed into my back bumper and we started to skid. I tried to change gears, but the car stalled and we flipped. I watched Lindsay's face during the couple of moments that we were suspended upside down. She whispered something about my bad driving. You're a really bad driver. And then went invisible. I was all on my own by the time the top of the car hit the ground. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Sound design and editing by Rowena Tassema. Music by Tree Palmado. With performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Eileen Vecti as Lindsay Lohan, Hannah Worker as Cinnabon, Bill Tyson as Psy, Steve Taylor as Papa Lohan, and Robert Bowles as The Voice. At one of the test screenings of The Parent Trap, the projector malfunctioned and the movie cut out 20 minutes in. Just as the crowd began to disperse, Lindsay jumped on stage and coaxed everyone back into their seats. She spent the next hour teaching everyone the butler handshake and leading sing-alongs. On the car ride home, Lindsay told her mom it was the best night of her life. Recalling the incident years later, Nancy Meyer said, At her core, it wasn't fame that drove Lindsay, but rather the joy she brought to people. She would do anything to keep those people happy. We present, for your listening pleasure, a six-part series entitled, Lindsay. Sit back, relax, and avoid the isolation cabin. I opened my eyes to a long figure whose forehead and chin were wrapped in white gauze. He leaned down and smacked me on the face a couple of times to rouse me. I jerked my head quickly and spit inside of his grin. Charming. People know I'm here. You can't just kill me. Where's the girl? What's with the wrap on your face? People can't recognize you if you cover the top half and bottom half of your face. Not a fan of masks. They suffocate me. I continued to lie on the ground. The most severe pain was coming from the top right part of my head. I had slammed it on the stick shift when we had hit the ground, and I felt my ear fill with blood. The man looked down on me like he couldn't make heads or tails of something. I reached out my hands and grabbed hold of his bare leg. I pulled it to me and bit down as hard as I could. Fuck! You fucking bitch! Fucking damn it! He kicked me once out of pain, and then returned when the pain had gone and kicked me again in the head. He did it one more time. I blacked out. When I came to this time, I found myself in a dark room. I blinked a few times and still couldn't see anything. Ropes surrounded me tightly, winding around my arms and legs and tethering me to a chair. I called out. Hello? Help me! Hello? The lights flickered on and the same man stood in front of me. His face was wrapped in the same way, but the gauze didn't cover his sinister smile. Who do you work for? I could ask you the same thing. I'm just a security guard. You seem like a lot more than a security guard. I've heard you're more of a detective. I'm not a detective. I'm barely a security guard. I just want to go home, please. Where's Lindsay? I don't know. She was in the car with you. Where'd she go after the crash? I don't know. I blacked out. And then blacked out again when you kicked me in the head. 
What do you want with her? We want to save her. She's in danger. So you kept her out of danger by running her off the road? That was a mistake. I'm not good at tailing. What the fuck is going on here? My head hurts. Please, let me go. We need your help. We? Myself and some interested parties. Lindsay is in danger, Marzipan. Someone is going to try to kill her tonight. We need to catch them. And we need you to help us do that. What if I don't? Well, (laughs) we have you tied up. So you should probably tell us you'll do it. And we have some people surrounding Jojo's home if you decide to go rogue with the plan. Let me get this straight. You drove me off the road. You beat me up. Kidnapped me and tied me up. And now you're threatening me and my ex-boyfriend? And I'm supposed to believe that you're the good guys. Hmm. What do you mean when you say good? Our job is to protect the girls, and to do that in whatever way we see fit. So you work with the studio? The man's phone rang at that moment. Okay. So she's there now? The man checked his watch. All right. I'll be back in an hour. Yes. I have her here. Hmm. Working on it. Just make sure they don't start filming until we get there. Okay, ciao. And take you for the ciao kind of guy. Look, these people want Lindsay dead. Why just Lindsay? The studio is fed up with the whole thing. They think having to deal with both girls is too hard, and they want out of this movie. If they off Lindsay, they can axe the movie and have a great story for Sydney's next project. Sister of dead girl axe in a movie? That's a great story? Twin girls who were supposed to be stars until one of them was taken too soon. Other twin lives on for a successful acting career to honor her dead sister. So the studio wants to kill her? Which makes you... I was hired by their father. We've been investigating this thing from the start. And we are absolutely certain that Lindsay is in danger tonight. They won't wait any longer to go ahead with it. Unless you convince the girls to quit the movie. Why kill Lindsay and not Sydney? (laughs) Seriously? Who who do you think is the real talent? Sydney is bursting with fame. Lindsay is... uh, Regular. And if I don't help you? What? You'll kill Jojo? If you don't help us, we will do much worse than that. But it's okay. Because you will help us. How do you know? It's the right thing to do. And you'll do the right thing. The word right sounded particularly hollow coming from this man's mouth. I had a book of insults to throw at him, but I was tied down. Let's go. I'll talk to Lindsay. I'll tell her what I want to tell her. I'm not guaranteeing I'll do what you're asking me. Oh, whatever you say. Come on, let's go. We arrived on set and I moved slowly out of the car, still unsure what I would do. As I stood, the man with the gauze ran off. Just then, someone called my name. Marzipan! I stopped in my tracks, like I was programmed to do so. What are you doing? And where have you been? Lindsay came back all scratched up and said you guys went dirt biking? Who goes dirt biking in the middle of production? Everyone is kind of pissed at you about that, by the way. I thought they had stopped filming. Yeah, well, then Lindsay called us and said that the last letter was from Dad, and then Mom got a restraining order, and now we're filming Sydney, again. Sydney, you need to stop this whole thing. You need to quit. I don't know who is trying to hurt you guys or why, but there is someone or multiple people, or I don't know why. I don't know. There's a lot of people who are hurting you. 
Heck, I'm probably hurting you. You don't look so good. Where have you been? I know I must look crazy right now, and to tell you the truth, I don't really understand anything that's going on, but I know that either you or Lindsay will be hurt if you keep filming this movie. Marzipan, I think you need to just calm down. Listen, nothing is wrong. The last note was from my dad, and those other notes? Those were actually kind of from me. I was writing them to get a little tension, and then Lindsay was adding her name because she felt left out. Like twin, like twin, right? <laughs> Nobody was ever in danger. It was just the low ends stirring up their own shitstorm. That's what we're known for. Wait, what? You were the one writing those notes? But, but wait, what, what, what about Wally then? Oh yeah, I forgot about Wally. Huh. Sydney shrugged her shoulders and I started to float away. Sydney grabbed my arm and began to lead me in the direction of the crowd. The thing is, Lindsay says she won't film until she talks to you, Marzipan. So you have to make sure she knows that we are making this movie. Now. And that we won't have any more interruptions. Well, you were the one writing the notes. Yeah, well, I never would have if I knew the filming would stall. The movie's more important than anything. Sydney looked different. I was examining her face closely when I noticed everyone doing the same thing to me. The girl's mother appeared out of the crowd. Dirt biking! Why would you go dirt biking? She's got bruises and scratches everywhere. How are we supposed to cover that up for the movie? You could write in a dirt biking scene. You no, know, I went to college with girls like you. And those girls are very successful now? And those girls never actually found happiness. They just got more clever and less emotional. Those girls never stopped hating themselves, and neither will you. Mom! Something about her speech felt good. I felt relaxed. I surrendered. Look. Lindsay's being worked on right now in the cabin. We need to film all of the isolation cabin scenes tonight. Go talk to her now for a maximum of five minutes and then come out with the words, we're ready to go. Does that make sense? You know, if I listened to everyone who ordered me to do something, I would short circuit like a robot and explode. And then you would have to pick up all the pieces. Oh my God, stop talking and get in the fucking cabin! Their mom pushed me forward. I thought about getting in the last word, but I felt my sense of humor leaving me. I was numb. I wasn't cut out to be a detective. Inside, Lindsay was sitting with a makeup lady standing above her, patting her face. She looked completely fine. Her expression told me that I did not. Can you leave us alone, please? The makeup lady stared me up and down. I welcomed the hatred in her eyes. She walked out slowly like she was waiting for Lindsay to change her mind. Um, everyone here hates me. Yeah. Sorry about that. You're probably gonna get fired. I didn't know what else to say. How did you get away? Well, I waited until you two were gone and then reappeared and hitchhiked a ride back. Most people stop for a beat-up little girl. <sighs> so you watched that guy beat the shit out of me? Well, yeah, I mean, what could I have done? I, I would have gotten beat up too. I I I'm just... A little girl. Did you know that Sydney was writing those letters? Oh my god. Was she? Oh, Sydney is a better actor than you. You don't mean that. You're upset. So the letters were just you and Sydney. All this shit for nothing. For a couple of girls playing pretend. I didn't put Sydney in the hospital. Okay, I didn't kill Wally. I didn't run us off the road. I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, do you? This whole time? No one has been straight up with me. Why are you shouting at Lindsay, me? Lindsay, you have to get out. Now! I don't know who it is exactly. Maybe the studio or your dad or Dennis Quaid or the fucking government. But somebody wants to kill you. What did the guy in the car tell you? He said, well, he said the studio wants to kill you and use it to bolster Sydney's career. They want to kill me? Lindsay, he called you regular. It was the biggest compliment he could have given you. You can be more than an e-true Hollywood story. You can be happy all on your own with no cameras around. Yeah, I guess I could. Lindsay, this isn't about your talent. We all know you can be a star, but you shouldn't put your life at risk. You need to get out of here. But you do think she's better. Lindsay, I am done with this shit. Lindsay turned cold all of a sudden. She turned on me and snarled out. So then go! I mean, the only reason you want me to quit is because you're nostalgic for your childhood. Because you're fucking sad now. You're a loser now. And the truth is, 
You love that Sydney wrote fake letters because your life got to be interesting for a second. What were you doing before working here? Do you even remember? This is the most exciting it'll ever be for you. You'll brag for the rest of your life about knowing Lindsay Lohan. And I'm 12 years old. Grow up and stop acting like I'm the one who needs advice. Well, you know what then? You want to stay on and do the movie? Enjoy it, Lindsay. Enjoy the fame and the fortune and all the other perks of being among the most emptiest people alive. I may be sad, but at least I have a soul and a beating heart. Oh, and I hope you get used to looking across from you and remembering that you're not even the most talented person with your genetic makeup. I am done with this place and these people, and I am done with you, Lindsay. Well, I'm done too. She stomped out the back as I opened the front door. Where is she? I don't know. Please, get out of my way. Everyone ran past me. I took a seat at the foot of the stairs. I didn't care what happened from this point forward. I was washing my hands of it. These low-hand girls in this garbage movie meant nothing to me. I stood up to leave and stopped myself. The truth was, I was having a hard time remembering what came before this movie. Just then, I heard a girl scream. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Sound design and editing by Rowena Tassema. Music by Tree Palmado. With performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Bill Tyson as Gauze, Eileen Vecti as Lindsay and Sidney Lohan, Olivia Jampol as Mommy Dearest slash Makeup Lady, and Robert Bowles as The Voice. By 2011, the public's belief in Lindsay Lohan's acting career had faded. All hopes of a comeback had been dashed, and people began to move on to Hollywood's next young starlet. But Lindsay never completely disappeared from the cultural imagination. For most of us, she would forever live as each of the precocious twins in the parent trap. As one paparazzo put it years later, in movies, you only need to be great once. She might not be doing what she'd like to be doing, but she'll always be Lindsay Lohan. stuck doing old Navy commercials for the rest of your life. Uh, there was water in that bucket a second ago. Someone which it I can't be irrelevant to me. Let me know if you ever find the real killer. Don't trust anyone except yourself. Restraining her. Stop me. You're destroying my girls. I won't let you in danger. You're a twin. I can always see her. How do you think this is all going to end? Everything after the scream is a blur. The tent was immediately surrounded by a fleet of bodyguards. I tried to fight my way through, but to no avail. I screamed for Lindsay and for Sydney, but I was ignored. I could tell someone was dead. It was in the air. They sent me home with no explanation. The intern called me later that day. Hello? Hi, Marsha. What happened? She's dead. Lindsay. She's gone. How? Who? She killed herself. I mean, geez. I don't know what you said to her, but she killed herself after you guys talked. The Lohans are none too happy, to be honest. I hang up the phone. I had heard enough. I stopped answering my phone or leaving my room. My dad got worried and tried to talk to me when he got home from work. 
would give up after an hour of silence and go to sleep. Eventually, he gave up altogether. It was just me in my childhood room with no escape. I called Lindsay once, and I swear someone picked up the phone. Then they hung up. Weeks passed, and I wasn't any less depressed. I watched X-Files on repeat. It was lonely and simple. I stopped remembering what had happened. It became a snuggly layer of sad that kept me lying in bed. I was masturbating one day to an episode where Scully almost fucks a bunch of Amish guys, and my dad knocked on the door, pulled up my pants, paused the X-Files, then remembered it wasn't inherently dirty and played it again. Uh, come in. Hey, you look guilty. I don't like people in my room. There's a letter for you, from the studio. Thanks. Maybe you should ignore it, whatever it is. It's just gonna dig up, you know. Dig up? It's still right there with me. You think I'm not moving for fun? Well, why don't we talk about it then? Or why don't you talk about it with someone? You know I'll pay for it. Talking doesn't help. I know what happened. There's nothing to work through. There's a lot to work through, Mars. The letter, please. My dad passed me the letter weekly. I stared down into my lap until he had left the room and closed the door. The words were typed, but I felt like I could hear an adult talking to me delicately. Dear Miss Marzipan, we would like to cordially invite you to the premiere of The Parent Trap. Despite the fact that we ended on less than ideal terms, Miss Lindsay Lohan has personally requested your presence there. The directions and instructions are enclosed. This is the first press event for the film, so we ask for your discretion in talking about this movie before the actual screening. We We look look forward forward to seeing seeing you there. I held the letter close to me, wanting it to tell me more. But there was nothing else. Lindsay requested my presence? What the fuck was going on? Was the letter sent in her honor, or...? The Lohans wouldn't let me rest. I decided within seconds that I needed to go. There was still so much I didn't know. Maybe knowing wouldn't help me, but not knowing was slowly killing me. Ladies and gentlemen, from the entertainment capital of the world, Shotgun Tom Kelly. Haters 101, Los Angeles. Groups at last in the kitchen, I just went... My dad drove me to the screening. Wore jeans and a baseball t-shirt. My dad told me he'd wait at a bar nearby in case we needed to make a quick getaway. Neither of us would tell if he was kidding. I was swarmed by paparazzi when I walked in. Only famous people would dress so casually to a premiere. Then they got up close and saw my pores and my unbleached asshole and realized I was nobody. Walked through security, delighted that I was actually on a list and immediately looked around for Sydney. I found the second butler instead. Marzipan! Holly! I have been told to escort you to your seat. Can't I schmooze? Not really. The movie's about to start. Have you seen Sydney? Yeah. No. That sounded like a yes. It was a no. What happened after Lindsay died, Polly? I got a letter from Lindsay asking I'm if... I'm really just supposed to take you to your seat. You can't multitask? I wouldn't want to overextend myself. I don't understand. Here is your seat, Marzipan. I do hope you enjoy the show. It's really a fine movie. Do you ever miss Wally? What? Do you... I heard what you said. Do I ever miss my dead twin? What do you think, you stupid bitch? Polly walked off in a huff, but I felt no remorse. Please welcome to the stage director of The Parent Trap, Nancy Myers! Nancy Myers walked out on stage to enthusiastic applause. I didn't recognize anyone sitting around me. All of them looked soulless, like they were eternally filling these seats and clapping for whoever came out on stage. Thank you everyone so much for coming tonight. The film that you are about to see is very important to me. 
It was not an easy process making this film, and we left a lot behind us to get to this final product. But it is my sincere belief that everything we may have lost has been made worth it by the amazing story that we were able to tell. My stomach turned. Everyone around me nodded. Why had I come here? It is a remake of the wonderful 1961 film starring Haley Mills. Just as was the case then, there is one very special girl at the heart of this film who you will meet at the end. We are all witnessing the beginning of a very rich and prolific career. Without further ado, The Parent Trap! I did my best not to care. So what if the movie was good? Lindsay was dead. It was offensive that Sydney was playing both roles. I crossed my arms and exhaled loudly every time the camera moved from Sydney to Sydney. Slowly, though, my arms came uncrossed and my lip muscles relaxed. I was smiling, laughing. I couldn't help myself. The movie was good. Really, really fucking good. I forgot about the suicide note and could only think of Sydney, my perfect Sydney who did everything right on screen. In no time, I was sucked back into the Lohan world. It's the kind of high you get after abstaining for months. Someone spat on the back of my neck. Marzipan. I turned my head to find Lenny gathering saliva back into his mouth. That Z does a number on my salivary glands. Nice to see you again, Lenny. Very good to see you. You think it's okay we're talking loudly in the middle of the premiere of this movie? I thought we were whispering. Want to take a bathroom break with me? As long as people don't think we're an item. Excuse me. Oh, hey. Oi, hey. Coming through. Lenny shouted at each person in the row to let him pass. People applauded as we finally exited the theater. Once outside, I relaxed. Lenny seemed exactly the same. Oh, what the hell were you invited for? Excuse me, but all you do is the mail, and you don't even really do that. Whoa, I'm a very respected part of the team, I'll have you know. I'm not respected if you have to tell people you're respected. Well, I'm more respected than the lady who got Lindsay to kill herself. Oh, I... He saw how much it hurt me when he said it, and winced for my sake. Sorry, uh, I know that probably hurt you too. I still hurt, Lenny. (laughs) Nice one. Thanks. How quickly did they start production back up? The day after her funeral. Fuck. What happened to Tree Fire? They released him and gave him a Cialis commercial. Did they arrest anyone? Who would they arrest? Sydney wrote the notes and Lindsay added her name. That's all that happened. That is not all that happened. Sydney fell. And Wally died. And Lindsay and I got run off the road, and, and Dennis Quaid had the gun, and, and the studio wanted Lindsay dead, or like, was it was it Sydney? And, and I, I didn't kill Lindsay! I swear, I didn't say anything to her. I just, I wanted her to be happy! I cried and forced Lenny to hold me. He started to hum softly. I smeared my makeup all over his jacket. He didn't seem to mind. You don't know anything else, Lenny? I don't. I, I know what they did was wrong, and I know there are a bunch of rotten, evil-hearted people, but I don't know how to get them back for it. Except... What? I brought you the first letter we ever got. The first one Sydney wrote, I guess. I thought maybe you'd want to see it. You're a good woman, Marzipan. If I was 90 years younger, and you were 90 years older, things would be very different. <coughs> what was I saying? Lenny walked away in the wrong direction. I inhaled as much of his gassy waste as I could. I unfolded the note and then immediately folded it back up. A sign to the right of the bathroom read, no entry. The door was locked, so I started to bang. I made my voice incrementally louder, giving them an opportunity to get to me before people in the audience started to hear. It's Marzipan! Hello! I'm gonna kill myself if you don't let me in! I was trying to figure out if that threat was in bad taste when the door opened and fucking Dave appeared on the other side. He looked worn out. He had huge bags under his eyes and his uniform pinched out this way and that. This was no longer a man I could trade quips with. Hi, Dave. What the fuck are you doing here? Just doing my job of annoying you. Yeah, well, it's been a while. You should be watching the movie. It's pretty good. How's security? Eh, thinking of calling it quits. It's not as simple as it used to be. Because of all the murders and suicides? Yeah. 
For example. You look tired. It all kind of hit me at once. Thirty years of fatigue saved up. Do you know what happened, Dave? Yeah, I do. Tell me then. I can't. Guess I should have known you were on their side too. <laughs> you never liked me. I don't know why I thought you'd help me now. <laughs> M- Marzipan, just listen. It's all fucked up. You're on the right side of things. These people, they're... Well, they, they don't have the same moral code as us. I try to do something. I was following the whole thing. I didn't want anyone to get hurt, but I need a job. And I need a pension. And I just can't go against my employer of the last 30 years. And I hate myself for it. I, I wish I was like you. Like me? How? You're a fighter. You give it as good as you take it. You're not going to let them just get away with it. I thought you were a fighter. You thought wrong. I'm just a guy with a job who wants to stay out of everyone's business. Fucking Dave handed me a piece of paper. What is this? The note she left. I looked down. All it said was... Dedicated to the talented twin. Sydney. Kind of dramatic, no? I don't know if I have it in me, Dave. Call me fucking Dave. We're friends now. I believe in you, Marzipan. You're still young. I think I need to grow up. Who told you that nonsense? A little girl I knew. Fucking Dave moved to the side to allow me through the door. He tipped his cap and bowed a little as I passed. I didn't think I'd even find this door. I didn't think anyone would open it. I didn't think Dave would tell me I'm a fighter and that I wasn't going to let them get away with it. Why can't I be weak? Why can't I go back to my seat and enjoy the rest of the movie? I came to the projection room and heard noises inside. I placed my hand on the knob and breathed in for a long time, knowing that I would enter on the exhale. And I went without another thought. When I saw what was inside, I wished I had breathed more. So good to see you, Marzipan. The man with the gauze on his face was standing with a drink in his hand. Somehow he looked completely different. He had a massive red forehead and a non-existent chin. I almost didn't recognize you. The gauze worked. I told you it would. Someone sitting down lit a cigarette and I realized that the room may be more full than I thought. Who else is here? That's not important. We asked you here for a reason, Marzipan. You lied to me that day. Lindsay wasn't in danger from the studio. Well, she died, didn't she? I suppose she was in danger from you. And whatever you filled her head with. I didn't kill her. No, of course not. Lindsay had many problems. It was nobody's fault. I didn't say that. I whipped out a flashlight I had swiped off of Dave and shined it out in the room. Lindsay's mom and dad were there. Dennis Quaid was there, too. And Polly and some other suits I didn't recognize. What the fuck is this? Everyone's on the same side? You've all been working together to terrorize the set and kill butlers and little girls? Well, no, not exactly. We didn't all start off on the same side. But we all eventually came around to see it the same way. And I think if you watch the movie, you'd... Who killed Wally? Oh, my. (laughs) I'm not sure if I even know that. Anyone here kill Wally? Yes, I believe that was me. Who said that? That's not your concern. There's somebody missing here. Is that right? Where are you, intern? There is a pure silence but I could tell from Gauze's face that I had landed on something. My throat started to close up, but I made myself continue to talk. See, Lenny gave me the first threatening note that you guys ever got. And we all know now that was written by Sydney, right? Strangely, though, it perfectly matched the handwriting of the suicide note that Lindsay wrote. At first, I thought maybe this made sense. Lindsay and Sydney were twins, so I guess it's plausible that they have the same handwriting. But then I remembered something. It wasn't Sydney who actually wrote the letters. Sydney would write a letter to the intern who would then copy down what she wrote in a new letter and then leave it in Lenny's office. Lindsay didn't kill herself. The intern did. I 
felt a cold breath at the back of my neck. My job is to do as I am told. She grabbed me from behind and pulled me to the ground. She slapped me and then pressed her hands against my neck. I'm in struggle. I felt the life leaving me and I welcomed it. Maybe this would give me purpose. My death could make my life mean something. I would die for a reason and no one would question what the fuck I was doing for those first 22 years. Just as I was slipping into unconsciousness, I heard a short yelp and the intern's hand slipped off my neck. Fucking Dave stood over me, brandishing a nightstick. He helped me to my feet and pushed me out towards the door. Get out of here, Miser Man. I'll take care of things. Just get the fuck away from this place and don't come back. I heard Dave, but I was on a high from the lack of oxygen and needed to do something before I left. I needed to find Sydney. I raced into the theater and down the aisles. I jumped up the stairs and went behind the screen. No one noticed me. The movie was at its climax, so I knew I didn't have much time. And then, all of a sudden, there she was. She was just standing there, totally relaxed as people plotted and killed around her. I thought about just letting her be. She didn't need the drama that I was about to bring her. But I couldn't help myself. She would be grown soon. She should know what really happened. She was staring at the wall at something I couldn't see. I'd seen that look in her eyes before. What are you looking at? Oh, hi, um, nothing. How are you? Um, (sighs) well, you know. How are you, Sydney? Oh, um, I'm fine, you know. Don't, um, don't call me that, by the way. What are you doing here anyway? I would love to enter a room without somebody asking me that. I just didn't think you were coming to this. Yeah, well, I was invited. So they could kill me, I think. Who's they? They is everybody. You can't trust anyone around you. They just care about your fame. They killed Wally. They killed your sister. Stop it, Marzipan. I'm serious. Look at these two notes. This is your sister's suicide note, and this is the note I know everything. I know what they did. It was wrong, but they did it for a reason. Lindsay would have held me back. And have you seen the movie? It's really good. It's going to be huge. Are you hearing yourself? Your sister is dead. And why? So the movie could be a little better? So your performance would be more impressive? Does that seem worth it to you? Yes. Yes? This is everything I've ever wanted. And now it's happening. You can't make me feel bad about that. Just because things didn't go the way you wanted. I thought you were more than that. And what does being more than that get me? Constantly depressed like you? I'm gonna have everything I need. The rest of my life is set. I feel completely free. You should go. The movie's about to end. I have to get ready for my speech. Can I just read you something first? What? This is the first hate note you wrote to yourself. Do you remember what it said? No. Dear whomever it may concern, I ask that you stop production immediately. This girl is too young. She deserves a real life. She shouldn't be spending her childhood acting like other people. She should be making stories for herself. Let this girl go. I will continue to harass this set for as long as you hold this girl hostage. Right now, she's good and pure. Don't ruin her. I don't remember writing that. It wasn't long ago. You're the same person that wrote that. You don't need any of this. This movie isn't even that good. Come with me. We can get you out of this. It's, it's not too late. It was too late. As soon as I sold out my sister, I'm Lindsay now. Sydney is gone. She took out her inhaler, shook it, and breathed in a long, heavy breath. And she walked away without looking back towards me. I slipped back into my seat to watch the end of the movie. Probably wasn't safe, but I figured as long as I stayed in the crowd, I would be okay. The film ended and the credits rolled. It read, starring Lindsay Lohan. 
Guess they thought Lindsay Lohan had a better ring to it. I watched through the whole credits. There was no mention of a dead sister. Finally, the lights came up in the theater and they welcomed Sydney, now Lindsay Lohan, on stage. She was funny and engaging and gracious and said all the right things. Yeah, she was going to be huge. I slipped out of the theater in the middle of her speech. I had heard enough. Lindsay Lohan was a star. Outside on the L.A. streets, nothing had changed. I took out my phone and dialed Jojo. Hey. Hey. You want to go see a movie? Sure. You got something in mind? Yeah. Something hopelessly romantic. But no kids. Sounds good to me. We met up and saw you've got mail. It was a great day. One of the best I can remember. Well, you probably know the rest of the story. I thought about going to the police after the premiere, but I thought the better punishment would be making them all live with what they had done. I didn't know how to explain the whole story anyway. And as for the new Lindsay, she was successful at first, but eventually it all caught up with her. You can repress that for only so long. I see Lindsay now and I feel bad. If there's one person she could have used in her ascent to fame, it was her sister. She had no one. Just a bunch of people disappointed that she didn't do more for them. Me and Jojo got married. I know that seems anticlimactic. I don't know if I even love him. But he was kind and undramatic. It was what I needed. We have a quiet life. We don't talk about the low hands. Sometimes I'll cry out of nowhere and he'll sit next to me and rub my hand until I feel better. I wouldn't say I'm happy, but I have my moments. And that's enough. I'm still one of the few people that know about the real Lindsay. I try to think of her often so that she doesn't disappear entirely. Disappearing was what she was good at. It was reappearing that she could never get right. If you watch The Parent Trap, there are a couple of scenes that the real Lindsay is actually in. The scenes are short, but for whatever reason, the editors decided to use Lindsay's original takes rather than Sydney's new ones. I guess for those couple of lines, Lindsay was the more talented twin. I wonder if anyone will ever find out what really happened. It is strange that Lindsay Lohan had no asthmatic symptoms until she was 12 years old. Guess these are things that people don't notice. I don't want people to know the truth anymore. I just want Lindsay to find peace. I want Lindsay to know that I still love her. And I always will. Lindsay was produced by Alex Genty Waxberg, Hannah Worker, Isabel Platt, and Rachel Aronoff. Music by Tree Palmado. Sound design and editing by Hannah Worker. With performances by Annie Fox as Marzipan, Amanda Sentineau as The Intern, John Goodall as Father Sapan, Jennifer Harley Mitchell as Letter Reader, Luke Taylor as Polly, Nicole Klein as Nancy Myers, Nate Ratner as Lenny, Gideon Saltzman Gubbe as Fucking Dave, Bill Tyson as Gauze, Eileen Vecti as Lindsay Lohan, 
Alex Genty Wexford as Jojo, and Robert Bowles as The Voice. Thank you.